Thanks for staying with us. Well, the special investigator appointed by President Bola Tinubu has taken a decisive step in the ongoing $6.2 million fraud case involving former CBN Governor Godwin Emifili. The investigator has requested the Interpol National Central Bureau issues a red notice against uh, CBN staff as well as two others involved in the scandal. The accused individuals were found to have committed a criminal conspiracy as well as uh, allegedly forged documents in the name of former President Muhammadu Buhari. And these documents were allegedly used to steal uh, the said $6.23 million from the CBN in preparation for the 2023 general election. Well, during the ongoing trial, uh, former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, testified that the documents used to pay uh, the $6.2 million to election observers were indeed forged. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission filed the amended 20-count charge against the former CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele, for his alleged involvement in the fraud. The accused individuals were said to have acted with impunity and without regard for the law. And now the special investigator has taken a bold step to bring in these perpetrators uh, to justice. And of course, that is the crux of our discussion this morning. Of course, in a bid for the country to regain accountability and transparency in all its institutions. Well, joining us now to react to this uh, developing story, we have Ayodele Adewale. He's a political analyst. Uh, welcome to the program. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me. We also have joining us the former manager of public and government affairs at Mobile Oil Nigeria PLC. He's presently the CEO of Chronicler and Associates, Aki Fatuke. A pleasure as always. Uh, welcome. The pleasure is mine, Kemi. Good morning, Nigerians. Right. Gentlemen, once again, you're welcome. And this scandal, this controversy has indeed uh, become a burning issue, a disturbing trend, especially with the revelations by the former uh, SGF who served under uh, uh, President, the then President, Muhammadu Buhari, in the person of Boss Mustafa. But what do you make of the revelation so far, Mr. Fatske? I'm so unhappy, Kemi, and um, as a chartered accountant and a controls person, I don't have to have gone to school to know that Nigeria has been run aground. The shame that has befallen Nigeria, yes, we've been hearing about so many things on corruption in the last eight years, in the last 16 years before that time, but we have entered a truce mm. of the most incredulous, the most unbelievable things that can come openly when the former secretary to government, Boss Mustafa, testified in court. I am beginning to see um, a stage where the downhill <laughs> uh, direction for Nigeria is being accelerated. 6.2 trillion billion dollars mm -hmm. paid to who? When? How? In this same country where we have the likes of people in my profession, the issue of chartered accountants of Nigeria, and where we have top-rate lawyers in the mold of the Williams, Roti B. Williams of present memory, and uh, right. the doyen of our profession. These people will be puffing and shaking in their graves. No. I dare say, um, now this through three basic dimensions. One, controls, discipline, right. accountability. Paid in cash in 2022 is unfeasible. I can't, I can't just begin to now think about it. The second dimension, of course, is now to look at paid to who? Paid to the electoral monitors. Yes, we knew the electoral monitors as part of their helping to deepen 
and widening democracy were supposed to come in as observers. Was it the government's responsibility to pay them? Don't they have embassies here in Nigeria? Yes, they do. The largest black country on surface. And don't they have NGOs? Now, given that they decided that they were going to pay, how are we not able to trace when you say you have paid cash? Paid cash to who? Specifically, who took what? Is it for hotel accommodation? Which hotel? Is it for logistics and transportation? How much of this is gone down? We are joking with Nigeria. We have joked with Nigeria's dams too far. And I dare say the third dimension is now a total lack of a sense of shame. So we can come out in court. Alibaba and the 40 thieves, and between the 40 thieves and Alibaba, one will be pointing at and pointing at uh, the other. Look, those are just the elements, in my honest opinion, um, that uh, requires a lot of answers to. But I am not a politician. I understand politics. And as a student of politics, I can say to you, from my own experience, or what in private sector you, 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 you call um, case study, we've seen this movie before. Forging, it's, it goes all over. But what we do is just to make sure that we take away manual intervention. Nigeria has fintech giants all over the world, not just West Africa. We have devised means by which we should go technology. And it's been on for all this while. So how did this now uh, kind of happen? I work in ExxonMobil. I can say to you for sure, and I know the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria presently had a stint working in mobile, but that is not an issue now. We are even saying that, hey, wait a minute. Obaze discovered this as part of audit and controls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what is the political will to do the right things? A few things that I see uh, com 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 coming around. In 2024, in 2023, are we still writing memo by long hands that we now begin to say memos have been leaked? Monumental shape on the country. And right now, we see situations where the secretary to the federal government takes a memo, 1.8 million, Mr. President, please approve 1.8 million, and then shanked to 1 million, and then the president with his green barrel um, now says 500 naira approved for what? For going to sit? We haven't begun a situation to strictly begin to look at the real discipline that we have. Like I said, we've seen this before. We went digital. In fact, Nigeria, the way we see Nigeria today, in Mobile Nigeria PLC, was in 2000 to 2003. Leadership failed, followership took advantage, hunger, and we are not doing. And the leaders right. just decided that right. what they were going to do is to take care of themselves. My point is simple here. President Bola Tinubu has to rise to the occasion. Mm. Um, I, I've not seen that happen, and I have to say that clearly. I want to see a much more disciplined self, people around him, the National Assembly. This is not the time for us to now be putting budgets and be right. spending on luxuries when right. our robe is burning. Okay. Th that said, let's compare it now with, uh, with Comrade Hare. So, what are the takeaways for you from these revelations uh, revealed, or from this revelation so far? Well, the takeaway is that um, there's proper accountability happening now uh, from the uh, forensic investigation, uh, auditing that was carried out at the CBN that have helped to throw up what we are dealing with now. And I must commend the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to have put in place that uh, forensic auditing uh, that tend to show us all of the gaps that have happened within the CBN. And I must commend the EFCC too for taking that bold step to get the Interpol to 
to come into play to arrest these ind individuals. Mm. Uh, it is a very shameful thing that uh, the signature of the former president was, uh, was forged. And I can recount that uh, at one of your interview, uh, private interview with the president, Buhari, that I watched, he said that uh, every officer under his watch will have to account. And that also likened to the Bible when uh, the Holy Scripture said that uh, the, the son and the father will account individually when we get to the throne of judgment. Uh, I will only appeal that Interpol hasten their investigation to arrest these individuals and try to get the money back. Nigeria really needs money right now so that the money can be judiciously spent for what it is meant to be spent on. Right. And um, in terms of whether this trial, of course, in a, the matter is ongoing before the court. So, you know, there, there's a limit to, to what we can say. But in terms of, um, you know, revelations as hefty as this, do you think that uh, this trial is, you know, going to give all the answers to uh, the allegations regarding the allegations of impropriety, financial uh, impropriety of this humongous level. Do, do you think we will get to the bottom of this through this trial? Definitely we will. Uh, the meal might be slow, but we shall get to the end of it. We are governed by law. There's no other route that we can pass to get to the uh, bottom of this, of this matter. Investigation has commenced. I think there should be timeline for the investigation. And like I said, the Interpol will have to hasten their processes because these guys have gone into the diaspora. They are hiding somewhere. They can also be tracked. Uh, even if they are passed through the, through the gaps within the borders, they will be somewhere. They have faces, they have prints except they go to now do um, plastic surgery. Even at that, we can still track them. Technology can help. So we can only pray and of course appeal to the various agencies that are saddled with this investigation to come up quick with, uh, with information that will help us unravel this. And of course, the private uh, uh, auditor that was commissioned to audit the CBN must also wrap up its own activity to submit its report to the president so that all of these gaps can be looked into, studied very well, and share with the current uh, governor of the CBN in order to close more gaps that are there and encourage those who are doing well so that people be encouraged for productivity that will in turn help the Nigerian state. All right. Uh, Akis Patuke, what, what is it for you now? And the papers already are speaking of um, the Jim Obaze uh, Special Investigator Panel. They are in done with their work, as um, you know, Comrade has said, you know, urging them to expedite uh, their work in this regard so that Nigerians can really see how serious um, this panel or this government is in coming out or fishing out uh, the atrocities, whatever atrocities, uh, from the Apex Park. But in terms of your expectations regarding this trial, because so far, how many witnesses now? I think Boss Mustafa was the second witness uh, so, so far to testify after the CBN official uh, you know, gave his own side of the story. It is bound to go to the defense. Uh, MFLA will naturally bring up his own um, you know, defense since he has pleaded not guilty. Uh, but uh, the papers are saying this morning the special investigator has lined up 14 exhibits, nine witnesses uh, in this um, fraud, this um, alleged fraud, Interpol activating red notice alert to widen dragnet for uh, the capture of these suspects. What do you see? How do you see this all panning out? What are your expectations? Well, Kemi, um, the elders say went to kids according <laughs> the tree um, in the bush. A silent elder will look at it and know where, and how, and what direction the tree would fall. I wish I can swallow even up to 50% the optimism 
uh, that my friend and brother Adiwali has said. I think, like we have in the French, the revolution is becoming too little, too late. I am not in any way trying to now then say, this person is <laughs> wrong, that person is wrong. But we have a samurai. We have a chief pilot in Bola Hamed Tinumbu today. I think I am seeing situations where things are going too slowly, and I'm seeing a coloration of a bit of a continuation of that old regime. I mounted my point that people are calling me from all over the world, asking what is happening in your country. Is it true, or is this one of these social media uh, hypes? Alas, it's true. Because we had a secretary to the federal government at that time coming to open court to say what is said. Do you know the kind of capital flight that is going to take and toll will take on the little steps that President Bola Tinumbu is taking? I'm, I'm saying, simple. President Bola Tinumbu, we need giant, much more giant steps. We are not looking at CBS. We haven't looked at NMPC. We haven't looked at NPA. We haven't looked elsewhere. My point is four things are happening in Nigeria today. One, trust deficit is gone downwards. Nobody trusts the average Nigerian, despite the fact that they know that we are leaders when it comes to control and accountability. They see us outside this country, and they see how we do it. I was part of uh, the 57th Annual Accountants Conference, where President Buhari came, and I mean, through a representative, and we gave clear, clear communique, talking about things that we are seeing in here. I mean, we additional participated. This <laughs> is uh, um, Ezekwesili participated. Texts from all over the world came and said, oh, come on, Nigeria, you are the giant that we should be looking. But I am extrapolating that to the samurai that we have on board. I am not happy that what happened during Buhari cannot happen again. Why? We have situations where memos are still being done manually. How many people in the presidency know how to use the computers? I put it across, because if you have computers and you have traceability, which is the essence of technology, you will not now be saying somebody has put a memo and then, uh, you know, there is uh, an office messenger that will take it to the photocopier. We will now then make photocopier and begin to leak to the outside world. That means we are not ready to start. I say this because of my own involvement, and I've just mentioned it here. And you know a deja vu. Again, 6.2 million US dollars was the same amount my company used at one point in time to ensure credibility and accounting. Two million out of this was for training of our people. The people were so trained and you go back to the records, you see that the best of the best you can find anywhere in the world, gone to banking, gone outside Nigeria, went to Ghana, went to Zimbabwe, are people that were trained by Nigeria. But what has Nigeria done? And what is President Bola Tinumbu currently doing? Yes, bold reforms to align the interest rates to take away subsidy. I, I, I have problems. I have problems with the kind of implementation. And let me tell you my problem. My problem is just the kind of example I see with this president, the kind of example I see with him, with his son at the National Assembly coming and saying things like, some people are here, they should not be here. Something is fundamentally wrong. Something is not working. I see a situation where a budget is done, and under the nose of this president, perhaps for political and political balancing, members of the National Assembly will be buying SUVs, I see situations where Mr. President, either he is the problem or the people that surround him are the problem. Why I say he's the problem is people surrounding him are showing him the direction to go, but it's not going. But I suspect that the office of uh, the chief of staff, I suspect that the office of the, of the secretary of the federal government, who is 
right now still carrying memo. Okay. It's something we should not see. Look, we are being a laughing stock all over. So that's one is that is one. People are hungry, and we are being insulted. Can you imagine the situation where the Emir of Kano, clear insult in my view, clear insult. He's told us what we all know. Yes, go back and tell your husband that we are hungry. We know what is spoken now, sir. Can such a thing ever happen when Buhari was there? Can Long and short of the whole of this is that Mr. President needs to wake up All right. to the coffee, the insecurity, the corruption, and let me say the final one that I know people will want to be very diplomatic with. What we are seeing in the horizon is the wind of change that is going in the ECOWAS region. It's been Gabon, it's been Burkina Faso, it's been Mali. Lately, we now have a, um, a, a, a Niger. Niger. And Mr. President, for people, and Mr. President knows this, because he might be wondering how come, it's just my analysis, okay. going to appeal to the military that do and do your <laughs> responsibilities. When wind of change started, like with Mark Mellon of, uh, of, of Great Britain at that time, when the wind of change started in 1960, it didn't broker, it didn't take any prisoners. If this president does not get up right now to begin to show good example, I don't have any problem with the policies. I mean, when you say you want to take away All right. subsidies, All right. is subsidy on consumption, we should have some form of subsidy on corruption. And when we have corruptive people surrounding you, take decisive steps. Obaze is trying to do his best. He can only try. Finally, you made a point just now. You said uh, Obaze has lined up a couple of uh, witnesses, witnesses. exhibits. Let's wait. The ground is going to shake. People close to the heart of government and people close to the heart of this present government are going to be called to question. I do not see any reason why. My, my view. Buhari will not go into the dock. He has no, no immunity right now. I don't see any reason why the emirs and the kings and the obese who have shared our commonwealth will not be called to dock. And by the time all these things begin to happen, Nigeria begins to unravel. For now, okay. Nigeria is not viable. Nigeria is not viable. I repeat, Nigeria is not viable. If 6.2 million, when our children are being killed like files on the street, as we speak today, as you and I are speaking right now, more people are going to be killed. Just watch it. It's not a cause. All right. That so said, it, it's, let, it's terrible. Let's, let's and we balance, need to do something. Let's balance um, you know, your perspective of, of this trial, how it is a reflection or... I don't know what you think, comrade, but how it reflects on the state of the country. Um, comrade Adewale, what areas of um, what um, uh, Mr. Fatuke has said would you like to respond to? But, you know, where, where I'm going is how this trial is also a reflection of the current state of the country and the thorny issue of, um, you know, the trust deficit or the issue of trust, the issue of credibility uh, of the current administration. Well, I will say that um, trust is a product of manifestation. And the manifestation in this context is that the present administration have put forward programs that can heal the pains of the people. Uh, it is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Uh, the distortion of the economy did not start with this administration. It has started prior to this administration, and the administration is taking both steps to reduce all of this uh, uh, economic impasse that we have globally. Uh, I do not align with some of the submission, but I know very well that uh, the Nigerian economy is in dire straits. But again, the hands of the government is on the plow. They are doing all their best to making sure that things work well. I'll take it from security. Yes, we have some security lapses, but in recent time, unlike before, you see that many of these kidnappers have been apprehended. We have seen that in the last weeks that have come. You saw what happened in Ekiti State. Unlike before, those criminals might not have been apprehended, but they were apprehended. 
Similarly, in some other corners of the country. So that shows you that there is an assurance that Nigeria will get better. Yes, you have the free fall of the Naira that is happening now. But again, the administration is working to the nail to engage the people, engage the economic players, showing them how to do these things. And they've also shown some sinkholes, a dependency of some Nigerians not to believe in the system in Nigeria, especially in, I mean, in education and, of course, in health. Yes, they have their free will of liberty. But again, these are areas that put in more pressure on the Naira. Yet again, Nigeria also needs to generate more income. We see what is happening in the oil and gas industry, where people just go, either blow up the pipeline because they want to get their own from it, or take away from it and sabotage the government. The government also have engaged some key players within that, those enclaves to support them for pipeline monitoring, and they've been very productive, you understand? The production of the crude oil for international market and all of that have also increased. But we all have to do a lot to making sure that this system is good. The government also have to continue to work 24 hours, continue to engage the Nigerian state, put more intervention, especially on agriculture. Recently, the president have ordered that the, the, uh, the, 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 the grains be released right. for people, you understand, in order to push down all of these things. They are working so much on infrastructure, especially road infrastructure, in order to get out these goods for people to assess and all of that. Many interventions are also being put in place, but it is not enough. More needs to be done. And in order to achieve this, we have to close more gaps, especially leakages in our own economic stream. Mm. The Minister for the Coordination of the Economy has also been coming out regularly with his team. The Minister for Budget, the CBN Governor, we've seen them many times engaging the economic class in order to talk to them. We've seen some level of policy being given out. But again, state governors, local government uh, chairmen or hemsmen, as you would call them, must have to play their role. There has been an increment in terms of federal government allocations to them. The question now is, what are many state governors doing with these funds? I mean, some state governors are still not able to pay salaries as of now. They have not been able to increase the minimum wage that they all agreed to as of then, which is 30,000 Naira, despite the fact that the federal government has increased their subventions and all of that. What is going on? The federal government alone cannot shoulder its responsibility. We have three tiers of government. They are appropriating resources to them. They also have to play their role the way it should be played. And by the time you do all of these things, the pressure in the center will come down and so many other attributes will come in. In terms of the Tinubu administration and um, Mr. Fatuke here, apparently his views are, also resonate with a crop of Nigerians who expect that the Tinubu administration should you know, run government differently. And he has expressed concerns about um, uh, the, the paper trail, so to speak, uh, you know, in governance, especially federal level. You've served in a level of governance, uh, a level of government, you know, you know at, at one point or the other. But, you know, what are your concerns about the, the implications of these revelations that, that we have, you know, come to hear? The office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, the signature of a president being allegedly forged and, and all of that. And of course, his calls for digitization of um, you know, the administration of, of running business at all levels and most especially at a critical, sensitive um, you know, level as the federal uh, government. Let me tell you something. In any system, you have the merits and you have the demerits. Even the the analog system that he mentioned, the paper trail and all of that. There are still the demerits there. That there are tendencies that people who have a sinister act, they either want to lick the documents or do whatever with the documents. In terms of technology, it's also there. I can plant a bug in this place and get into your computer and get access and manipulate it. If 
I had sinister intentions. Right. It has happened in the White House before. We've seen leakages of uh, uh, FBI uh, documents and all of that. There was a bug in the, in the CIA, you understand, in the, in the, in the MFI and, and all of these things. So there is no system that cannot be penetrated, right? The only one that we know that is a bit assured right now is blockchain technology, <laughs> you understand? But as time goes on, Definitely people that have created it will also have to create a gap in order for it to be penetrated. So you keep updating your systems, you understand? But what matter more is for you to have good people that can come into the system and work with you as a team. And you, in replication, through their hard work, must also have to reward them. Even in heaven there was penetration. Lucifer penetrated and created what we have seen today. So there is no system that is foolproof. Right, but we will continue to up our games as time progress. All right, and um, back to you, uh, Mr. Fatuke. So, right, where do you see this all going? And you know, I'm looking at you know the issue of, um, for example, now this payment of uh, for to foreign election observers, which was said to be the reason why this money was. Um, signed for and, and who it was, you know, meant to go to in terms of, you know, beneficiaries. And then uh, Boss Mustafa said something like uh, he, he has manned about two elections. He manned two elections, you know, as SGF at the time, and such a role should, you know, go to INEC. INEC should have been the one, uh, you know, to control that. But even that also, you know, needs to be analyzed. This amount of money to be sent to foreign election observers. Uh, what do you make of that, even if INEC had, you know, brought up uh, the need to pay this money? Kevin, 6.23 million. Cash. C-A-S-H. Million, right. Billion. Right. Million, actually. Million, 6.2 million dollars. Six point... Let's round it. 6.3 million dollars. Cash. In an economy like Nigeria... Election observers, in my opinion, they should come out and speak for themselves. Who picked this cash? How? How will anybody in 2024 believe? Looking at the forensic audit that uh, Obaze, my dear friend, uh, is doing, well, I, I know about that. Obaze can only try. Oh, like what Adewale say, I do not have the confidence that Nigeria is being run properly. And I say that boldly. Because if 6.2 can just disappear like that, there are more hands in this that is going to come to fall. Whether they are emirs, and my friend has also spoken about uh, the subnational governors, two billion COVID. Not accounted for under this same government. Yes, I recognize the fact that we are practicing a quasi federation. We are not practicing a federation, we are practicing a unitary system. And situations where people continue to say Nigeria is not negotiable is lying to ourselves. And Mr. President needs to understand that clearly. I have a feel that he understands that. The political will to now then do what is needful. As I speak with you today, Adewale said to me that, um, you know, there are pros and cons in whether you go technology or you go manual. Even let's go manual. There are checks and balances. How will 6.2 million naira cash live in central bank now, <laughs> a commercial bank? You left all the normal controls that you see and then you then begin to put. And then we had... People in Central Bank, and we had people who are deputy. We had a governing council in Central Bank. It went through all this, and nobody in Central Bank now then said, hey, wait a minute, because we are going to do it manual. This has to go. Part of the ticks, you should say, ah, okay, that's the signature of Mr. President. Please, can somebody verify if it is genuine or not? Then I went to verify if it's genuine or not. And then, without even saying that, the bank can put a call through. Mr. President, Mr. Chief of Staff, $6.2 million 
at a time when Nigeria was groaning and bleeding, where blood was flowing everywhere, where our military were overstretched. It's not an excuse. And then I married that, like you rightly said, to the fact that I am now beginning to see a president. I like to be proved, proved wrong. I'm, I'm seeing a president who is meeting on memo. And that memo is not going to be carried by him. It's going to be carried by some other people that you feel that can always leak this out. We are really not ready. And Ebim Pamio is beside in Lagos, is beside in Kano, is beside in Mina. If something is not done to take a hard decision to restructure Nigeria, everybody wants to say, hey, what do you mean by restructuring? The financial restructuring, which I know President Bolatino who knows very much about because I know he knows very much about it. And if there are political um, impediments to this, come out and tell Nigerians the truth. Right. I am not really interested in you, Mr. President, talking about second term. No, Nigeria is not a matter of second term. Nigeria is getting into a truce where we are going down the drain. Nigeria is waiting for some happy go lucky people that happened January 15 in, in, in uh, 1966 to just press the button. There is so much hunger in the land. Mm -hmm. And we must now get back to it. I am in full agreement with the policies. Neoliberal economists will tell you that where we are at today, Many of us saw it four, five years ago. And that is the truth. We saw it and we, we said, no, but then you don't say, you don't keep quiet. let's continue to do what we need to do. This president came with bold reforms. What has not happened is the discipline and the rigor to show, I am going to show this example as the most, I keep on saying it all the time, powerful president in the world. All right. In terms I... of the way you can influence the National Assembly. Right. You can influence the state governors. I will put certain things down, and I want to be, to be sure. Now, it's re released from Grain Reserves. We are hearing from Grapevine. Mm. With Grain Reserves, are they there? We saw rice pyramids at one point in time, and suddenly rice is going for seven, seven. Look, it goes beyond sitting down and saying, we shall. We shall. Mm. We should restructure right. Nigeria. We should get back to the drawing, drawing table okay. and say to ourselves, people don't trust you as much as they trusted you with your margin of, uh, of, right. of, 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 Mr. Uh, Fatuke, of victory. I'll come we back. get everybody come back together to on a round for... table to take Nigeria to the next right. level. I'll, I'll come back to you for uh, possibly because of time now, possibly final submissions. But I even want to also, you know, feel this question to the both of you regarding uh, what people have called the ghosts of the MFLA tenure while heading the CBN. And now that uh, Mr. Cardoso uh, is the Laiyemi Cardoso is heading the place now and the battles uh, he's having, you know, regarding the free fall of the Naira inflation and the likes for the good of the common man. Uh, I, I wonder how you respond now to this, um, you know, lingering issue on and his Estoni uh, dollar versus the Naira and, and all of that. Where do you stand and um, how well do you think um, Mr. Cardoso is working to right the wrongs? I use the, the, that phrase cautiously, uh, cautiously to right the wrongs uh, that his uh, predecessor made. Mr. Cardoso did say that the value of the Naira is not actually what is being projected. So it also means that the rate at which we are buying the Naira right now is not the actual value. In fact, Naira should be stronger than what it is now. And that is why he has come out to, to, to say that, and that they are working tirelessly to making sure that the, the actual value of the Naira is projected in order for it to gain its strength and all of that. But again, we've had a lot of Arakiri that have been there before now. And if you don't clean up all of this mess, our economy will keep being in dire straits. And part of the cleanup is this forensic investigation that have come out and that is why I said that the audit process should be hastily completed so that it can be presented to the president, the president can sign off on it for persecution. By the time you put out the persecution aspect of it, mm -hmm. right, gaps will start to be closed. Then we can repatriate some of these funds because they will have located where these funds are then more people can have trust in this system 
and this will also help our economy to gain strength. Mr. Vatuke, your take on this, are, are these mechanisms uh, issued so far by the CBN, the current CBN composition, are they working? And what is making them not work if um, you don't agree? As an accountant, I am bound by controls, I'm bound by discipline, I'm bound by the conservative principle, I'm bound by telling the truth, even if you feel bad about it. All bites must be propelled by character, competence, capacity, and compassion. Compassion, we have seen because of corruption, whether it is Beta uh, Edu, whether it is Olubu uh, Ojo, uh, and all that. We've seen things going down in that direction. How many much more that do we need to have? In terms of control, I have absolute, and listen to me, I have absolute trust in the control capacity of Dr. Yemi Kadosu, but I treated him. Because what he's fighting against goes beyond what we see. Uh, for the first time, I think last Tuesday, and slightly some time ago, with all the efforts and the grit that they tried to, to, to align the exchange rate, the official window <laughs> went over and above black metric. What is that telling you? Yes, element of speculation, he came out and said it. I like people who come out and say the truth. Element of FDI not wanting to come because perhaps some people, including Yoruba stock, now watch my language, including Yoruba stock, don't believe in this, Mr. President. I'm speaking, I'm speaking to you here uh, with good sense of humor. Don't believe that FDIs will come to this country. We will do everything to just want to derail him. A good president, a good manager, must look at all these scenarios and come to terms. The Amica also has said, as far as he is concerned, we have eaten our cake before we baked it many years ago, which is true. We now have to try and find a free float to the Naira. This same man has now come to now then say, look, I don't have any problems with intervention. We saw a lot of shenanigans going ahead at the banks. And maybe for one day, <laughs> for one day, we saw a little bit. But there are issues surrounding the management of our forests that again comes back to issue of trust. A Yoruba man in CBN, a Yoruba man in, in the Ministry of uh, you know, uh, Solid Mirrors Potential, a Yoruba man in marine economy, and we are not hearing anything in there. I am speaking because of love. I am not criticizing. I am just making the point the way I will say it to people who want to listen. I sympathize with Kadosu. He has to float the Naira. But I'm happy. Two steps he took. One before December. He said the ban on, uh, on some food items that were placed on ban is not going to work because we walked a situation where we said we were banning certain things in certain areas. The thing we were just coming in, we were in free flow. We all saw that. So we are not producing enough. We don't have the silos that we have lied and lied and keep on lying. We have issue of uh, the Lago Dam that was not taken care of, that did not allow uh, our farmers to go. And the issue of security. Our farmers are going to farms and they are being beheaded. We all know all these things. It tells you that we should go beyond the tinkering. It's not a Cardoso issue. It's not a um, uh, what they are doing issue. It's an issue of the foundation of Nigeria that has been destroyed. I repeat it. The foundation of Nigeria that has been destroyed, and if you want to build anything on a foundation that is faulty, it will sink. You can put white coat paper and all it, everybody look at it. See what happened in Port Harcourt? Look, we can go on and on. We need a situation where we come to terms to the fact that our democracy is not working. Nigeria is not working. We must all get together with a boldness of a president who has started this boldness, I dare say. But with the compassion that I mentioned, the 
some national levels at the National Assembly. Everybody must get up. Not these bills that they are saying they are just putting, just to try to, to, to think at. The hungry are shouting and they are waiting to swallow the rich. And this democracy over 20 years, if care is not taken, Mr. President, is slipping through our hands. It goes beyond you as a person, but you need the character and the boldness to come up and say the truth to Nigerians. Subsidy is back. We all know subsidy is back. So why, who are we, who are, who are we lying to? Not because of the fault of Mr. President. Right. Look at what Ajero said. Ajero said, the secretary of the federal government asking for one million to come and for 37 people to come and hold meetings. They have been holding meetings with uh, the government. Not a couple have been paid. Right. I know. I'm right. not saying that. Look, okay, we've run out of time. It's force for force. Right. One million naira minimum wage. Nigeria has now become a theater All of right. the absurd. We've run out of time. I want uh, uh, Mr. Ayodele Adewale to give final words. Well, my, my final word would be to encourage Mr. Yemeka, also the governor of the CBN, uh, to further look into the banks. Because ordinarily, people should be buying their forex from the banks. You get to the banks, the banks will tell you that they don't have forex. But the CBN has given them forex. What is happening? So there must be more close watch on these banks. So whatever that is lodged to them, to give to the people, is actually disbursed, and, the, and they must they must be to come to Lagos they must and then be, Nigeria is saying no, we don't want it. So they must be, Nigeria. They must so be, Nigeria is not ready right. to be Nigeria, pure and simple. Okay. Sorry, okay. sorry, Adiwali. No problem, uh, sir. Go ahead. There must be a daily reporting okay. of their activities, especially as it concerns forex disbursement right. that should be plugged to the system of the CBN, which the CBN can watch daily on how these monies are going out. If you don't close the nose on them, you will empower the forex dealers on the street. All right. Uh, that's all we have time for. Uh, gentlemen, Ayodele, Adewali, and of course, Ake Fatuke, we thank you very much uh, for your contributions on TVC Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Kevin. And that's uh, our serving for you this Thursday edition of TVC Breakfast, thanking you on behalf of the whole crew uh, for keeping up with us uh, so far this week. But a reminder that all the views and reactions of our resource persons are theirs and have no connection with TVC News. From all of us here, once again, we say thank you for watching. We have another date, hopefully, uh, definitely tomorrow, the Friday edition. Up next is Your View with the Ladies. Bye for now and a great day to you. All.